So my first question to you is, take your book to the American, letter to the American church, how would you apply that to economics and money? Well, it applies to everything. Uh, and, and you all will understand the economic side of it better. But the point is, there is such a thing as truth. Uh, there is such a thing as good and evil. And we're living at a time in America right now where, l l let me just briefly say what the argument of the book is, just so that this makes sense for people. It's called Letter to the American Church, because a number of years ago, I wrote a biography of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German pastor who uh, really understood as the Nazis were rising that it was the job of the German church to speak against what the Nazis were doing, to be aware of what the Nazis were doing, and to fight it with everything they had. Bonhoeffer uh, effectively failed in the sense that even though what he was saying was true, like an Old Testament prophet or a New Testament prophet, people didn't want to hear it. Uh, and so in, in essence, the German church was silent in the face of evil. Uh, and because of the silence of the German church in the face of evil, Germany uh, slid uh, into what we can now recognize as the pit of hell. What happened in Germany because of the silence of the church was a nightmare. What I argue in the book, Letter to the American Church, and this is not complicated. If you read the book, it's the shortest book I've ever written. But if you read it, you'll see it's pretty clear. The silence of the American church today on similarly vital issues has opened the door to every kind of hell and chaos. The economic chaos is obvious. Most people, you don't need to be a spiritual person to realize that opening the door to socialism or to uh, to, to the kind of Marxist values that are uh, you see everywhere in cultural Marxism is always disaster economically. People will not flourish. If you care about the poor uh, and you let people blather on about how socialism is a good idea or, or whatever it is, which is part of what I write about in the book, you are complicit in crushing the poor. Now, I speak as a Christian to Christians in a letter to the American church. You have an obligation to the poor and your obligation to the poor means speaking against those things, those systems, which are ultimately, we know, going to crush the poor, going to harm the poor. Uh, and so this is silence in the face of every kind of evil, economic evil, uh, which we see in Marxism and the, these authoritarian governments that want to destroy uh, free trade, free economies, uh, and so on and so forth, and, and much more. Um, it is one kind of evil, but it is... I say specifically, it's the silence of the church, the unwillingness of church leaders to speak against this, because in Germany, the church had the cultural power. It's not like a crazy idea. They had the power to speak against this and to stop what happened. Similarly, today in America, the church has the power to do this. And if we don't, on the economic side, it is going to harm the poor and God will hold us responsible. Yeah, no, and, and I love what you said. And Bono recently came to this conclusion. He said, you know, capitalism has lifted more people out of poverty than any other system. And so you're right. To help the poor, we need to have free market capitalism, not crony capitalism, but free market capitalism. But the second point I'll go to is Luke 16, 11, which is I agree with you 100%. The church needs to stand up. But Jesus said, if you're not faithful with your unrighteous mammon, you will not be trusted with true riches. And so we, we talk about that all the time. A starting point for the spiritual battle is to get your money part right. And we're seeing the money part through ESG and through all the other things that we're doing, destroying our values. We're essentially funding our own demise. 